Hello guys, welcome to my channel Knack for Cloud. The topic for today's tutorial is AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda helps you to host a backend service or API without having to provision or manage servers. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate a hands-on session on AWS Lambda. Before starting, you must have an AWS account. If you don't have it, follow the link in the description below to create it. Once you create and log into your account, you will land on this console page. Let's create a Lambda function now. To start with, search for a Lambda service. Here you will find a create function button. So AWS provides us multiple options for creating a Lambda function. The first option is author from scratch. Here you will have to write the code from scratch. The other two options will provide a predefined template to start with. For the demo purpose, I will go with author from scratch. For function name, I will type in hello world. You can choose a runtime environment based on the options available here. I will choose Node.js 12.x. Then I will click on create function. As you can see, the function is now successfully created. This is the dashboard for the Lambda function that we just created. As we scroll down, we'll find a section called Function Code. Here, you can change the runtime environment and the handler path. The handler path is configured to be index.handler, which means it will call a handler function inside the index file. To support that, there is a file called index.js and inside that file there is an exportable function called handler. We can conclude that whenever the lambda is triggered, it will call this particular handler function. Let's start testing the lambda function. To do that, I will log the incoming event. After the log statement, I have to create a test event. I will use a predefined test event. After I create a test event, I have to save it and then I can test the lambda function. In the execution results, you can see the response which was created in this particular line of code and it was returned. Then you can find a log for the test event that we created which was getting logged in this particular line of code. Below the function code section, you can find a section called environment variables. Here you can create your own variables which can be used in the code. So whenever you change the value of that variable, you don't have to make a code change in the lambda function. Let's create an environment variable. Let's name the key as key fun and the value to be value fun. Let's save it. Now you have successfully created an environment variable with the key name as key fun and its value as value fun. Let's try to use this particular environment variable in our code. To, to use that environment variable, I have to type in process.env.key1, which was the name of the key. Let's save it and test it. In the logs, you can see the value as value 1. If I change the value to value 3, 4, 
let's save it so I should get the output as value 3 4 let's test it as you can see I got the output as value 3 4 let's go down to the basic settings we can allocate the space for the execution of the lambda function the minimum memory which we can allocate is 128 MB and the maximum value goes to 3 GB the next setting is the timeout setting right now it is configured to be 3 seconds so whenever uh, the lambda function takes more than 3 seconds it will give you a timeout error the maximum value of this timeout is 15 minutes let's save it in the designer section you can add triggers with triggers what we mean is those particular AWS resources can invoke this particular lambda function if we see the options available are API gateway AWS IoT code commit dynamo DB and like this we have a variety of options which can trigger this particular lambda function let's go back let's go to the concurrency section please note that the AWS account has the concurrency limit as 1000 for the lambda invocation for this particular lambda you can reserve the concurrency value for example if we reserve the value as 0 it will start throttling the lambda for example if I test it I will get an error message that the rate has been exceeded and we can see it it shows that the function is throttle which means we can't invoke this particular lambda function because we have reserved the concurrency value as 0 if I change the value to 1 now the lambda function will start executing as you can see it has been successfully executed the similar behavior for the throttling if you want to throttle the lambda function we can just click on this throttle button and confirm it now the function is in throttle state hope that you like this short and crisp tutorial thank you